Sean Sewell with InGamer.com. We're up here doing some rooftop tent and overland camping and testing out some gear to make that even more fun. One of my favorite things in that category for overlanding and making camping more fun is a powered refrigerator cooler. Something like this right here from Bougie RV. For the last three years, we've been using a Dometic 55 liter refrigerator cooler. Absolutely love it. It's still going strong, but it is very sizable. It takes up a lot of space in our vehicle. So uh, reach out to Bougie RV. Hope I'm saying that right. If not, it sounds pretty fun. Bougie RV to test out a mid-size 30 liter refrigerator cooler. In this case, also a freezer. So in this review, I'll go over how we use it, how it works, AC, DC, size, dimensions, what you can do with it, what you can store in it, and all of that. And our, our, of course, our opinions and takeaways at the very end. So lots to cover, so let's get into it. For reference, this is the back of our 4Runner truck. Um, typically, in a lot of review videos we do for overland gear and solar panels and batteries and stuff, you would see a very large white and gray Dometic cooler. It's been part of our setup for three years. It still is, but I left it at home to test out this guy. And that was weeks ago because this thing has done everything I needed to do, everything the Dometic did, but a lot less space and about the same amount of wattage, maybe even less wattage. And it's got one feature I'll get to in a minute that actually blew my mind and impressed me so much that I actually went out and bought one for my wife to keep in her vehicle. So that's saying quite a bit. Teased you right there with that. So we'll get to that in a minute too. First and foremost, we'll start with the sizing, like I mentioned. This is the back of a 4Runner. It's got ample amount of space. But when a third of that space is taken by a fridge, you, you lose a lot of capacity to, to carry a lot of gear. And we love gear. We are in gearment. We're always using gear and testing gear. So um, the fact that I got back three times more space with this was pretty exciting. So this is the width of it. Here is the door opening. See, it's a lot smaller. And then here is the depth right here. Not only is it smaller, it's lighter weight, about 28 pounds, I think. So a lot easier to move around for other people in the family to pick up, you know, kids to pick up, move around, take out of the vehicle, put it camp, put in a hotel room, take into a friend's house, so forth. It's, it's easy to maneuver, even loaded up. Now, back to this, the top has a nice little readout screen right here. You can see it is currently at 36 degrees, um, pulling 12.8 volts. Um, here's the power button. Hold down for three seconds to turn on, turn off. The lock button to lock it is currently locked. Up and down arrows, and then you get a USB-A port right here, just in case you want to power, I don't know, electronic toothbrush or an iPad or something. On the inside, you get a removable slot right here. It makes it easy to separate things like food, beverages, or however you want to segregate. And then a very helpful chart. In fact, I would zoom in and I would freeze that so you can see ideal temperatures for certain foods and liquids. It is pretty, pretty handy. For reference, I keep mine at about 39 degrees year round. And why year round? I'm in Colorado. As you would think in the winter, it's going to be colder than 39 degrees. Why in the world would I want to use a fridge in the winter? Well, a lot of carbonated beverages will explode when they get below freezing. And I don't know about you, but if you ever cleaned up and exploded beer or three in your vehicle, it stinks. It's a mess. So I keep it in a cooler, or especially I keep it in a refrigerator to keep it at a constant temperature. Because um, oftentimes here next two months, temperatures like last night got down to upper 30s, not too concerned. In two months, it'll get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit easily. And I don't mind camping in that, but my food or my beverages might not play nicely in that. Just something to consider. So. Again, on the sizing, this is the 30 liter version. I feel like 30 liters is a nice sweet spot for, for myself and my dog, for sure, for two or three days, not a problem. But with my wife and she likes to overpack, we can get a weekend camping trip in here with like lunch meats, LaCroix for her, um, some canned teas for myself. Uh, plenty, plenty of space for two people uh, for a long weekend. And uh, you're kind of probably wondering what this is. This is a sink from Dometic, it's pretty sweet. Just, push that button, out comes water. And then there are some two ways to power this. This is a AC or DC powered. All of those go through the plug right here. Both are provided. Right now I have the DC power plug going into a thousand watt battery right here. The Geniverse 1000 watt battery. We have a detailed review on that. Sometimes I use a Goal Zero, sometimes a Blue Eddy, perhaps in the future, maybe a Bouge RV, 
one. So I have it going to my DC plug and it is drawing at the moment two watts. The most amount of watts I've seen it draw was 54 watts and that's when it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit back in Denver uh, this week. It is trying to get down to 39 degrees. So if it's 100 degrees outside, it's probably 115 in the vehicle and it's a dark vehicle. Let me just, let me just show you the vehicle so you get an idea of what we're working with here. So we're testing that rooftop tent right there and uh, some other gear. Of course, we'll have those videos up as well. That's a Thule approach rooftop tent. But yeah, we're actually out here using the things we say we're using and testing the gear. So that's, this is where we come to do that. So back to the power situation. So you can do 12 volt DC plugged into a power bank, of course. You can also do, and this is pretty revolutionary, this is what I was excited about earlier, you can do the 12 volt DC uh, cigarette plug, if you remember those, but the 12 volt round um, DC plug, uh, you can plug into your front of your car. Some cars, like the 4Runner, and also like my, my wife's Mazda CX-9 have a plug in the rear, and if you plug it in there, I know on her car, it'll supply power even when the, the vehicle is off which might sound scary at first, but trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. This fridge has an intelligent sensor, so it'll draw power, like trickle charge, until the battery gets to a certain voltage, like 12.8, 12.4, you know, you can set it three different settings. I have it set to high sensitivity, so the moment the battery dips a little bit in capacity and charge, the fridge shuts off. It prioritizes having the vehicle's battery work for the vehicle and not for the fridge, as opposed to some of these units, that'll just drain your battery and your SOL. Now, I didn't trust that system at all for the first few days we had it. Um, we, you know, my wife set up, I put this cooler, the 20 liter version, just a slightly smaller version of this, in the back of her Mazda CX-9. And you can see how much stuff I keep in my truck. This is actually pretty minimal compared to usual. But her vehicle is super clean. It just has the cooler. And then I, I dropped off in her trunk for her own sanity, my own sanity, a power bank to charge a vehicle, like one of those ones you can jump a vehicle or a truck. We actually use those pretty often. I recommend them in a heartbeat. Go to Costco or Amazon or ask for one for Christmas or your birthday or Hanukkah or whatever. Just always make sure you have one of those. It's like our number one gift to give people going on road trips is get that charging power supply. Long story longer, we never had to use it. This did a great job of being intelligent, cooling down the refrigerator slash freezer, and never draining the battery to the point that it wouldn't turn over on the first try. That was pretty encouraging. On my 4Runner, it will not supply power when the truck is off, uh, which is okay. I have a thousand watt battery, so I just I have actually have many thousand watt batteries, but this is uh, sufficient for three or four days of use, a thousand watt battery without a charge. Usually on my rooftop tents, we'll have solar panels and the solar panel power will come into the battery and then the battery will come into the refrigerator as well as the drones and cameras and all the other stuff we use. But that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. The second way you can utilize this is with the provided AC power supply, which I keep super cool in the fridge. Yeah, this thing's actually 38 degrees. You don't have to keep it in the fridge. It just was convenient to shoot the video that way. So it has the same kind of proprietary plug that goes into the side of the fridge. This time it has a US AC plug on the other end. Now how this is great is in my setup, I can do the same thing. I can plug it into the back of my truck because there's an AC outlet and an inverter, or I can plug it into my solar uh, power bank right here to the thousand watt, whatever brand it is, or how a lot of you can probably use it too, is say you're on a road trip and you get to the hotel or motel, you can take the cooler in for the night, plug it in and keep it at a consistent temperature. Or say you get to your friend's house or your family member's house and you want to use this and keep it at a stable temperature for the, for the breast milk or for whatever you need to keep cool. Boom, AC power. Um, yeah, it's very versatile. So you can do AC or DC. You don't have to push any buttons or switch any switches. It just um, flips the switch internally and adjusts to that. So that's pretty convenient. What can I tell you after using these for about a month? Well, there's many good things I can tell you. Um, one of the size, I love the size. It plays so much nicer with more gear. I have so much gear we're testing that the, the Dometic was a, a pleasure to use and still is but it's overkill for 90% of my applications. I mean, I, it's huge, it's 55 liters. So about half of that, 
right here and it's just right space so one it allows me to have more fun gear in the vehicle and not worry about losing the ability to see out the rear window because of all the stuff uh two it's been really easy to use um i've never used a, a appliance that has that intelligent sensor to, to power itself while your, your car is off and not drain the battery that's that's awesome three it looks sharp this available on white bias from the send it in black it just looks good and this is the last time you're going to see it totally black because it's going to get stickered up later today trust me so uh and then it's just it works really well and it'll actually go to it it works great as a fridge but it can also be a freezer that's something i haven't experienced before and i don't anticipate transporting an eighth of a cow anytime soon but if i did need to i could put it in here and make sure it stays at zero degrees fahrenheit that's pretty encouraging power consumption like i showed you is two watts currently um, it does have a fan right here it does kick on from time to time it's a lot quieter than the Dometic because it has less space to, to cool i'm assuming and it's also probably newer technology by three years uh, but the most amount of watch was at 54 55 watts um, and that was just to, to get it you know down about 70 degrees from the ambient temperature so <laughs> that might not always be a power drop but i would i would budget 45 to 50 watts um per hour to uh to just to know what kind of battery source you should supply for it like i'm saying i have a thousand watt battery behind me that'll work all weekend two days 48 hours no problem good trust it not a problem at all uh, there are available battery packs for it that will last i don't know how many hours i don't have them haven't tested them but it's a much smaller battery pack maybe 300 watts something like that and it's also a lot smaller than the thousand watt and it's designed just for the bougie i hope i'm saying it right bougie rv um appliances if it's not bougie rv it should be bougie rv because that sounds like a, a really fun term right but it might be bouge rv boo i don't know i'll ask for forgiveness later i'm just doing the video on the product not the name but uh yeah long story even longer would i recommend this yeah heck yeah this is great uh the build quality that we've um observed and experienced has been really good it's very attractive it's a good size comes with both ac and dc power supplies uh the auto off feature to save your battery is fantastic um i can see this being a go-to um unit for anybody uh car camping truck camping overlanding rooftop tent camping rv people uh, a lot of applications um here in the next few months i believe we're going to work with them to cover some power banks and some solar panels which does, that's a big category for us we use solar panels and power banks every time we're out like every day of the year so uh stay tuned for those if you have any questions on this lineup this unit let me know i'll do my best to answer your questions if you have experience long-term experience with this share with the audience what you know we're, we're here to learn i know it comes with a two-year warranty then if you register you get a three-year warranty pretty sufficient in my opinion especially of sometimes going on the back of a vehicle to get banged up in dust and dirt and hot and cold and used daily um i think it's a pretty good warranty but yeah if you have any experience please share that with the people below we'll have more content in this category coming up i'm shooting more videos today on this category and we're going to the overland expo next weekend and interviewing everybody if you want to see that consider subscribing to our engagement youtube channel there's a link right there i'm sean sewell the owner and director of stoke for engagement and until next time take care